Pradeep Panranas, Managing Director, CEO of uh, Arthur River Mining, Arthur River Cement. Um, impressions today of the AGM? I'm sure you've seen a lot of them in your time. Any different? Anything that you that you that sort of came back to you today? I think we we're, we're getting a, a, a huge number of people attending the AGM. Uh, more so than many other companies in, 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 in on the Nairobi Stock Exchange. And that is a good sign. People recognize uh, the company, the brand. They want to attend the, the AGM. And, and, and a few people uh, make very useful comments about uh, the performance of the company, about the direction of the company. And it's always good to get, get a feedback from, from these shareholders. Because of course, the, the, the shareholders that we saw come, majority of them were like retail investors. There were a few institutional ones there today, but I saw a lot of retail investors who I would have thought have been shareholders with you for quite a while. Uh, yes, you're, you're right. Uh, the, the, the institutional shareholders uh, don't generally attend AGMs unless there are special resolutions to pass and so on. Uh, and, and the institutional investors walk into our offices or have conference calls and then we attend to to their questions and the needs on follow-up uh, phone calls and, and so on. It's the retail institution, retail investors rather than the institutional who who excite me a lot uh, especially on, an, on a day like this. Um, you get a feedback from from the retail uh, side of, of, of our uh, spectrum of investors we've got more than 6,000 shareholders Six, in total in total mm -hmm. um, and and each year the number of retail investors keeps increasing and as you mentioned some are here for a long time they have held our shares for the last 15 years or so and and uh, uh, have no intention of selling they want to see progress in the company they want to see appreciation of the share price and they want to see the company doing good things for the country. And they've received some very handsome returns from the time from all the way back. I mean, uh, we've had some tough years. We've, we've, uh, uh, but the last 10 years have, have seen a steady growth. This year we saw a 20% increase for the first half year. We expect this uh, result to carry on. If you look at the last six or seven years, we've had a, a, a cumulative average growth rate of about 25%. On our, on our top line and on our bottom line. And this is driven by the capacity increases that we've put in our cement business. Um, Tanzania market grew by 38% volume in the first six months of this year. Which was a standout number. And was that because you got more volume moving through it, right? Well, uh, we finished the first year of operations in 2013. And uh, 2014, first six months, it was, was not a new brand, not a new market, but we extended the distribution. I think that is what made a difference. The brand acceptance had always been there, but uh, enabling, uh, um, uh, making available the product uh, throughout the country was what changed uh, and, and gave us such a, a huge increase in, 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 the, in the sales this year. When we look at the geographical composition of, of the business, Kenya constitutes how much of, a, of the turnover now and how much would Tanzania be, for example? Going forward, yes. we expect Tanzania to be a little more than Kenya. Yes. Uh, at the moment, uh, but roughly, roughly the, um, uh, the same. Yes. Uh, but one, one thing that may change mm. the composition of, of, of the cement between Kenya and Tanzania and, and the non-cement is our fertilizer business. Yes. Uh, the fertilizer business was always a very second, secondary add-on to, to, uh, uh, to the group because it, it uses the same raw materials, the calcium, magnesium, sulfur, that we use in manufacture of cement and in other industrial products. That is what goes into the fertilizer business as well. But this year in particular, we completely sold out on our fertilizer business and, and uh, uh, we expect a uh, 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 very rapid growth in, in, uh, in, in this uh, division. And a ton of fertilizer sells for about five or six hundred dollars a ton, mm -hmm. whereas cement is about a hundred and ten, hundred and twenty dollars a ton. So in terms of the, the potential growth uh, of the top line, yes. fertilizers more will, on the fertilizer, side. fertilizer will, will grow. However, the focus mm -hmm. is still on completing our Tanga plant 
which is going to produce 4,000 tons a day of clinker, 1.2 million tons of clinker a year. And that really is a game changer because locally manufactured clinker is roughly half the cost of what, it, what, what imported clinker costs. And today, as East Africa as a whole, 45% of cement manufactured in East Africa is manufactured using imported clinker. So we're filling up very important gap in, in, um, in, in, in the clinker shortage in the, in the local uh, uh, market. Whether we consume the clinker ourselves, convert that into cement and distribute that under our own brand name, or we sell to the other uh, manufacturers, uh, especially the, the newly set up grinding plants, we have a significant margin by manufacturing clinker locally. In addition to Tanga, we're now looking at starting our next project, which is in Kitui County in Kenya. And, and um, when, when do you foresee that project coming? When do you see yourself sort of pushing that forward? A clinker plant takes about three years to, to build. Uh, it's, it's a huge capital outlay. We're looking at getting Tanga into production, stabilizing the ca cash flows from Tanga, and then working on the, on the next project. So it'll be about a year from now uh, before we start on the construction plant. So in the next four years, we expect to have significantly more capacity with the new plant in Kenya. But if we look at like the market capitalization today, half a billion dollars of value start listed first time in 1997 at the time of the Saba Saba riots. Uh, uh, we've had this tremendous journey. Where are you taking this now? I mean, you know, you've bulked it up. You've, you've got this big position on in Tanzania. Um, it, it's an exciting moment of growth for you. Where, where does, what, what's Pradeep's dream? I remember you once telling me at a mind speak that your dad gave you the keys and said, it's your business now, Pradeep. Remembering that moment, going back to your dad, who everyone spoke so fondly of, and I know you feel strongly about, where is this going from here? I think the important thing is to, to meet a need in the market um, and, 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 and to provide your customers with, with a product that adds value to their businesses, to their lives. Um, our cement business is, is growing because we are filling in the gap uh, created by the rapid growth in infrastructure in our economies in, in all over East Africa, the needs for housing, for, for schools, for hospitals for airports and roads and railways and so on. Um, if we continue focusing on meeting those needs, that is more important than focusing on, 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 on the market, uh, uh, market capitalization. Needless to say, market capitalization is important for our shareholders and, and the markets will eventually reflect what we're doing uh, in, in, in growing the value uh, uh, of, for the shareholders. Value creation for shareholders is based on, on two things, not just meeting the needs that I mentioned, but in building capacity at the lowest possible cost per ton uh, and using a combination of debt and equity. We are building our cement plants at under $150 a ton of installed capacity um, but using two thirds uh, debt and one third of equity. The trade sale price of, of capacity is at least $300. So for every $50 of equity money, retained earnings that we invest, we are creating six times value for our shareholders. And that has been demonstrated uh, year, in year, year in, year out. So for every dollar that we invest of, of, of the earnings that we, we make and we're reinvesting, we're creating at least six times. And this is all in a space of four to five years. We got lots of competitors. How have you managed to, comp how have you managed to deliver that, uh, you know, uh, significantly below your competitor average cost? How are you doing that? What is, what is the secret to this company? I think it's, there's no, there's no secret. It has been done by other companies before, uh, and it, I'm sure it'll be possible for other competitors who come in the market to do the same. What is important is managing our costs and, and, and uh, 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 executing our plans on time and correctly. We've got a very good team of engineers 
uh, and, and, and management team generally to, to follow through our investments um, right from engineering and design procurement to actually getting the materials on site and, and installing uh, and producing uh, to, to, to capacity. It's good teamwork. Um, if you have the good team, you can manage the money better, you can manage your time better, you can manage your, your out output and your marketing better as well. So it's all about people. Mm. Having people to work with a dedication, with a team, in the, with, with the teamwork. And, and that really is, 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 is what drives our company at the moment. Going forward, we will have continuous opportunities to expand as the economy expands, but then controls in the company, uh, bringing in discipline uh, as we expand and become a larger company will, will, will take its, have its own challenges. Again, we're building the capacity in-house to make sure that we have the people who can focus on, on operations and, and making sure the money gets banked uh, and, and another team which continues with, with the expansion and, and with, the, with the new capacity building. I think I saw a number saying 3,500 employees now, is that correct? That is right, yes. Um, across a number of different countries. Um, I, I've noticed a much greater level of engagement through the Rhino Cement Foundation with the local communities. Would you care to characterize, I mean, you know, we've spoken specifically about the, about the wider constituencies that you're interacting with. You know, the other stakeholders, the employees, the communities where you're operating in. It seems to me that you've got a framework and a modus operandi which is working well. I mean, that's the feedback we heard. People were impressed. They wanted to sort of access your various foundations. W what's your philosophy behind it? And, and are you happy with where this has gone now? Rhino Cement Foundation has taken shape over many years now. Of course, all companies participate in, 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 in social responsibility programs um, to some extent or the others. What we have done differently under the foundation is set aside a definite percentage of our profits to the found for the foundation. The foundation is managed by, by trustees composed of uh, a few external members and some members of our staff. And the philosophy is that the money should be spent by company staff for projects within the communities uh, where the company operates in. So the accountants in the company have given a budget of several million shillings says, go and find a project. The mechanics do the same, the electricians and the- So you're in empowering the them at that level. So at that level, they, they team up, they decide what projects are, 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 are most um, uh, are going to create most value for the community. And those are the principles on which we, we build. We want to, to make sure that the money that we spend is actually an investment in the future of the community. So that the returns are not just for one person or, or for one particular set of people, but for the entire community. That's what we call building communities and building our country and building Africa. Most important part of this is it is driven by our staff. They feel empowered, they work in teams, they feel that they are doing something far better than just producing cement or producing fertilizers or, or whatever it is. The company's mission is to build Africa in all its greater sense, not just by, by producing cement, but by producing communities, by, pro by producing um, uh, uh, an environment or living in an environment that, that, is, that makes everybody more comfortable than they are today and, and improving the standards of living for all of us. I'm going to leave it at that. Well done, Pradeep.